Hello and welcome to my session, Unlock the Power of PowerShell across your organization. My name is Heiko, I'm part of your Script Runner team and I want to show you how Script Runner helps you to simplify the way you develop, manage and delegate PowerShell. So first, short introduction into who we are. So Script Runner, we are into PowerShell management. And um, so our goal is really to simplify the way you work with PowerShell to manage and simplify the way you do, to delegate PowerShell. So this is part of our team. This is me. You can reach me on Twitter, on LinkedIn, via your email. And uh, we are actually very much into the PowerShell community and helping people with working and starting using PowerShell. And one of the things that we are, we are offering is uh, our PowerShell poster. So it's a poster that you can put on your office wall, home office wall, I guess, more these days. And it helps you with your day-to-day -day business when you're when you're working when you're working with PowerShell and you want to uh, look up how the pipeline works or uh, particular modules and stuff like that. So you, you can go to our website, order the the poster, and we will be happy to send this to you. All right. So um, our goal is, as I said, to really simplify the way you use PowerShell and to be able to delegate and uh, PowerShell and to make PowerShell available, not just to you as the guys who are really into PowerShell, who know how to write the scripts, who have the right credentials to connect to backend systems, but really take this to a level where PowerShell can be something that the whole organization can benefit from. And um, so what we're actually doing is we're centralizing your PowerShell scripts and your modules. So all the scripts, all the modules become are stored in a central place, which also means, of course, you can synchronize this with your GitHub or TFS or Azure DevOps um, when your PowerShell and your coding, your code management is going on here and since, and then it's, the script got tested and then uh, it moves to the production branch and then it can automatically become available to our solution. Um, the second step here is to think about, okay, how do I have to manage my credentials in order to delegate the script to people in help desk or maybe even to end users, but of course, without making these people backend admins in my, in my, in my on-premises or my hybrid or my cloud systems. Um, the way that works is that when we use PowerShell together with Script Runner, and I'm going to zoom in here, then Script Runner is the only instance that's actually executing the scripts, which also means only a Script Runner needs to have access to your backend systems, no matter if it's on-premises again, or it's cloud or hybrid. And Script Runner is also the only instance who needs to have access to the credentials to run the scripts and to, to establish the session and connection to your backend system. And that in itself, of course, makes the whole process of running scripts very easy and secure. And on the other side, if we look here at the users, it might be, again, somebody in help desk or the line of business, and you want to enable this person to maybe spin up a new VM in Azure. Um, but of course, this person should not have any permissions in your, in, your, in your Azure subscription. So what happens here is this user talks to Script Runner via a web interface, Script Runner, in, within Script Runner, you delegate what kind of use cases this user is able to to work with. And so this user doesn't need to have any backend connection and the user doesn't have to have any backend permissions to run things in Azure, in Office 65, in SharePoint, in Exchange or whatever backend system. Um, and so this is one of the, the very important um, aspects here of using our solution uh, because it becomes really a secure way of working and delegating PowerShell. And of course, when we talk about the credentials, um, we also support password servers. So these credentials don't have to be stored on the script runner machine. It can be, they, these credentials could be stored in a CypherArk password vault or in Pleasant or Psychotic, which means script runner is in real time asking for the credential if there is a script that wants to connect to Exchange or to Office 65 or, or Azure or whatever backend system. 
And so this really even more centralizes the whole aspect of, of the, uh, all the, the PowerShell bits and pieces that we need. And if you are uh, interested in learning more about security and PowerShell in general, we have this free ebook available that you can download from our website. It's a 140 something pages ebook that really covers all the built in security features. And um, yeah, if you're interested in that, just go to our website and you can, <coughs> you can download it from there. All right. So, okay. We have a secure environment. We have a good way to manage our credentials. Now thinking about taking a script and make it available in help desk or, or, or end users. Of course, it has to be easy because typically, of course, these are not the people who are familiar with PowerShell, right? And on the other hand, you don't want to write any kind of UI code. So what happens with script runner is we're taking the information from your scripts and automatically transform them into a web user interface, into a, a form, just the one that we see here, which is an, a simple example for creating a new team where you can see there are three parameters visible and available, like the name of the team, description, and the members of the team. All the other parameters are still there. They are in the background. And because standardization is very important, all these things, like all se your security settings, like how you do you want to allow Giphy's yes or no, um, private channels, public channels. In this case, it's even the, the name of, of the channels are pre-configured. So all this happens in the background and only the things that really need the attention of the user is visible here and the user can type in what you what is available here for, for, for the input. And you control what is visible and what are the things that you pre-configure and where you want to make sure everything is done according to our company guidelines, to our uh, compliance regulations and stuff like that. And again, without any additional coding, it's just we're looking at the synopsis, we're looking at the parent block and taking the information from there. And then step by step, you can add use cases and delegate requiring tasks to people in help desk or end users. And depending on how you and how many tasks you want to delegate, and maybe a user sees like this, like six tiles for different use cases, or maybe it's going to be 20 or, uh, and the, then you can categorize them, for example, based on the platform and stuff like that. And it's really just a web interface. So it's very easy to work with that. And people who are working with that don't need to have any knowledge about PowerShell because it's really just about having the input form, having the use case, uh, let the people select and, uh, the information that is necessary and that's it. Then of course, um, besides the manual approach, there are two other ways. Of course, as we know, we can, we can run PowerShell scripts. So the second one would be a scheduled approach where you have housekeeping processes, which you can integrate, of course, also into a script runner. And the third one would be integration based on the REST API, where you allow monitoring system, ITSM system, workflow systems to also trigger scripts in a well-organized, well-managed way. And so, what happens is that script runner becomes this hub for all PowerShell activities. All right. So with this, uh, I'm going to switch to my demo environment. So to show you how this solution actually looks like. And here we're looking at the script runner admin app. And so, yeah, as I, as I said, it, it, it starts, we are centralizing, we're starting, it starts with centralizing the scripts and the module. So here we have all the scripts that are available here on, on this machine. And um, actually, most of the scripts are actually coming from our GitHub repo, where we have hundreds of scripts ready to use that you can just download and on work and modify to your needs. So if you go to github.com slash script runner slash action packs, here you see scripts for all kinds of platforms, Azure, Citrix, Exchange, Office 365. And um, so you can go there and see, okay, there is a script to creating a new VM in Azure, for example, and you can take a look at how we work with that and, and, you, and how you can use that. And um, so all this, scripts that I need are here in this repository. And you might also realize that here we have, we also detect if a script detects, uh, uh, contains functions. So you can decide if you want to later on just work with a particular 
function or with the with the functionality of the full script. So let's say, for example, um, you want to delegate the execution of Azure VMs to somebody in, in help desk or maybe in your development department so that they, they don't always ask you to spin up a new VM so they can test or develop or what, for whatever reason they, they need that. So, um, so let's see if we have a script here that might help us with creating um, a new Azure VM. And obviously here we have one, it's called new ASVM, sounds pretty good. And if we take a look at the script, which I'm going to do here in the good old ISE, um, you also see that we have some add-on here for checking out check-in scripts, for example. Here we can see that script um, to create a new Azure VM. Um, so we have to, we have the parent block, we have the parent description. That's important because that's re what we're going to use to to create that web user interface. We have our parameters here, and then we have the actual the actual code, um, and we also see that we add some additional information here, which we're going to look at later on. So and what you might realize is there is no import AC module, there is no connect AC account stuff like that because that's what script runner takes care of. So it's really just down to the use case and to the code that has to do the job. So here is the script. Now, um, if we want to use that script, what we need is a credential, right? So the second step here, we have a, or we need the credential to connect to our um, Azure subscription, which we have here. So you can create, and this credential again, of course, is stored centrally here on the machine, other, other scenarios and other um, credentials that I have here, for example, are being retrieved from a, from a Blessing server in this case, and you can create all kinds of different um, credentials here. And here you might also see that there are also other ways talking about support for PowerShell 7, could be has a hatch key, um, it could be something that's maybe in the secrets management module, which we support as well. And um, so in this case, I have a credential here to connect to my Azure subscription. The next thing that I need is a target. The target is the actual backend system that we want to talk to. And it can be all kinds of targets, local PowerShell remoting. You can combine targets into different collections. And you can, as you can see here, we have predefined target types for Office 65 and, and uh, for Azure. And so we already have a, a, a target here for Azure that we can use. And um, if I'm looking at this one here, I can see, okay, there is a, is it, this is an Azure target and it is mapped to a credential that we just saw, which is for my Azure service account. So that's why in the script itself, we don't need to have any install module commander because this target takes care of that and we don't need to have any connection uh, connect AC account commanded here because script runner also takes care of that because we know the target is using this credential and um, that's it. So no information about the credentials in the script. So we have the script, we have a credential, we have a target and with this we can create an action and that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going back to my scripts and um, we're looking for this new AC VM script and say, okay, with the, for this, we want to create a new action. Now, what you can do here, for example, if you have multiple teams using script runner, you can say, okay, this is a script that is only, should only be available if somebody from the Azure admin team is logging in so that if somebody from the exchange team logs in, they don't can mess around with my script and my credentials that belong to Azure. So this is something that you can, that you can organize here within Script Runner. And then, um, so here we are in the action. So we can say, okay, what kind of tags we wanna we want to use? We can say, okay, what kind of name we want to have for this action? Create new Azure VM. For example, that could be a name. And then 
What you also can do, and we will see why that is uh, interesting later on, you can say, okay, what, how, mu how much time do I'm, I'm, am I saving by automating and delegating this process? Uh, it could be maybe 10 minutes, and we can see what, what that does later on. Um, then the second step is, okay, where do I want to run this script? What is the target? And here again, of course, we have our Azure target that, that we just uh, looked at. And um, then we have some PowerShell options. There is one that I'm going to use, which is using the library scripts here. Because what we will see when we later on, when, I, when I'm running the scripts, uh, after um, creating the, the, the Azure VM, we are creating a, 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 a little HTML output. Um, and that function actually is stored in a library script. So what I can do here is I can centralize all my function into library scripts and say, okay, every, for every action, for every use case where I'm needing this library script, I'm just configuring this action saying, okay, we want to preload this library before the actual main script is executed. So the main script, if it calls some function, it's available based on the configuration right here. Okay, then we're looking at the actual parameters. And here we see we have all kinds of parameters that are that coming that are coming with the new ACVM commandlet, right? And so what I can do now, I can I can click on okay and say okay, now I have created this new action. And then we can take a look at how that how that looks if I'm if I'm actually starting this action, like say, okay, now I want to create a new a new Azure VM. So I'm clicking on run down here. And what we see here, of course, we have all kinds of parameters that maybe I am as, as an administrator or, or, or because I, I wrote the script, I know what to type in here. But if we think about I want to delegate that to to, to somebody in help desk, what I definitely want to do, I want to make it as easy as possible. And so what, what happens is if I'm going back to the edit mode, I would, for example, if there is a predefined resource group name, I would type that resource group name and um, I say, okay, would I say, okay, this is the, the resource group that, that this user is able to, to use. And then I would hide that parameter from the input form. So step by step, what I would try to do here is to simplify the whole process and to really only show the things that are important for the user in the user interface. Everything else would be done, config would be configured here in the background. And I would say, okay, for example, if my default is, okay, people could only be uh, allowed to, to, to spin up Ubuntu VMs, then I would select that. And again, I would hide that parameter. And so step-by-step, you simplify the process for the user and it gives you the control about how that VMs actually would be created because we're talking about standardization, right? Um, so that's a very important aspect to simplify the, 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 the process. And um, in this particular case, for example, um, we have this parameter for location. So which means, okay, I could say, okay, this I want, I want to spin up a, a VM in East US, for example. Now, if I'm thinking about, again, the person in help desk that might not know that, okay, there is a East US uh, for, for an Azure region. So what I can do here is I can select and I can activate a query and this query could be, okay, I have a list of all the Azure locations that I want the pe people to be able to select. The same could be true for size, right? Because I don't want people to kind of spin up the crazy expensive monster VMs. Um, and, and first of all, of need to know, okay, this is a standard, I don't know, D2, D2, whatever, uh, V underscore V2 or something like this. Of course, it's because number one, everybody could type anything, even if, if it's not correct. So the thing would not work and they could spin up the most expensive one. So again, here, this is a good use case for having for having a um, a query, and um, these queries can help you in many many ways. So these are just two simple examples, 
um, if we look at the queries here, you can have scripted queries, you can have Azure queries, you can have let's like the two examples that we saw here just now, list of entries and stuff like that, which helps you with, with simplifying the whole process for your users and you can schedule these queries if you have things that you want to query from a from a uh, from a cloud resource which might take a few seconds so you can already have a cache of this information that can be used here so and as a result um, of this whole process and I'm, I'm I'm going to switch to a an action that I have already configured before um, Ideally, such a process would look like, and the, the action would look like, could look like this. So there are just four parameters left for the user to do something. Like, okay, we need a name of the VM. We can select what kind of image can be used, the location where this VM can be created, and what would be the size. Now, this th what we see here, and I'm going to switch back to the query here. Is like, okay, I, ha I, I what I'm trying to do here is to have something that the user can can identify as okay this is just about okay selecting the size of a vm then of course if the script runs we still need the technical information right so the script is is going to to work so what happens here is in this in these queries and that's happened this true for all the queries is you always have something that you display to the user which we see here on the left side and then then, then you have the actual technical information that is being used when the script is executed. And this concept you see, you can use for all kinds of queries. Will it be for SQL resources or before VMwares and snapshots and, and, and stuff like that. So that, that's, that, that's something that you can use uh, in all these different uh, scenarios. And um, so, okay, you have configured this action, you have tested it and you say, okay, now it's, it's okay. I, I want to start to delegate that so that people don't really ask me every time to spin up a, a VM for them, right? So what you would then do is you would say, okay, I'm delegating that and you can, you can here work with, with color schemes and you can say, okay, I delegate that to my help desk or maybe to, to a development team or what, whatever you have configured here. And uh, once that's done, then, and now we're switching the role. So here I'm still, of course, I'm the administrator if I'm somebody in help desk, then I'm working here with the script runner portal. And here I have the information again with these four parameters. I don't see the parameter names because the users don't care about that, right? It's just about, um, okay, I want to spin up a new VM. Um, I don't know, dev VM. And this should be an Ubuntu machine. And I want to spin this up in ECS and it should be the cheapest one and then so I have selected all the things that are necessary and then click on run and now in the background script runner is executing the script so we, we're leaving this coming back later uh, because this activity now together with all other activities with other scripts with other platforms they're ending up in this dashboard and in the dashboard you can see what's actually going on um, so we have this view, you could also switch to a, to a list view here and say, okay, I want to see, okay, here I can see, oh, this, here's this user, Tina. She actually started this action to, to spin up a new VM and it, it, this target has been used. And once that's done, we can see, okay, what's actually happening. I could even go here into reports in real time to see what's happening in the background and if the connection works and I can see already see what has been the parameter input so which includes the one that I have added, but also the predefined ones like the name of the resource group, for example. Now, and then if there's something goes wrong, of course I can see that uh, I have the whole process. And if I want to see if, if something went wrong with some process, I can click here on that and can I can go to the report and see, okay, there was ac actually, there was a problem with connecting to a system because probably the machine was down or the service was down. Um, so you have the full control about all these activities and not just for the one that we just saw for the manual approach, but also if there would be scheduled um, actions, which we see here quite a lot, or if there would be other fully automatic approaches and, and, and actions that you could see here as well. Now, here it's still running. Um, 
it's great to have this portal uh, where the user can log in and, and based on the delegation, they can create VMs, they can create users or create reports or whatever. Um, but to make it even easier for the users, you could also think about in integrating this form or this use case into an existing web portal, into a self-service portal, just like this one as a simple example. So here, um, without knowing in the background that number one, that there is PowerShell and not knowing that there is script runner, they just say, okay, I want to spin up a new VM. So I have the exact same dialogue it is, but it is in the CI of that surrounded website. So it becomes as easy as possible for the users to work with that. And they don't have to worry about logging into another application. It's just there. Yeah. It's just there where the users are working anyway. So that that's uh, a, a great way of really making sure and that what, what the idea of unlocking the power of PowerShell across your organization, which means these people working with something like this, they don't need to know anything about PowerShell. You don't have to, you don't have to train them. They don't need to have backend permissions because based on only based on the delegation within script runner, you can en en enable people to do something like this. So in other cases, spinning up, uh, creating out of office modifications or teams or creating SQL databases or whatever, all the great stuff that you can basically do with, with PowerShell. Right. And so everything, um, is managed in a central way. You can, you can, um, of course also, and I want to take a look at this as well. You, you can create the scheduled actions, which could be a combination of, okay, maybe it, it should be manual and scheduled just in case you want to have a, a, let's a run now scenario, for example, for particular use cases. So if we look at the scheduled actions here, so one that I have here is running every hour checking for a, uh, checking my repo and to see if there are new scripts or updated scripts and then downloading them automatically. Um, to my machine here, I could also configure an email notification so I get some information if the execution caused an error, for example. Um, and again, of course, this would also become part of, of my dashboard. Um, and the third way of using and running and triggering the scripts, of course, would be using an automation connector for all kinds of backend systems that you want to integrate here with script runner based on the rest API. And if that's not possible, we also have an email inbound connector where maybe some of the legacy systems can also send mails in a particular formatted way. And then script runner can take this information also to trigger and to run scripts with the right parameters and the right values, of course. And, um, what is also, I think quite interesting is that you, you can have a, a view on what time and money you're actually saving by using PowerShell together with script runner. Um, so which means for, for each actions. And we saw that when I configured that, um, that Azure action is like, okay, how many, how many minutes I'm saving by automating that here. And I can, I can, I can type in that value. And then based on that, we're calculating the time as well as, um, yeah, the money based on the hourly wages that you can configure here. And then of course you can, you can export that. And maybe this could be a report that you send to your management every week or every month. So they can see, okay, that that's actually what we are gaining by automating things with, with PowerShell and, and script runner. Uh, and, um, yeah, so it gives you again, because of all the centralization aspects of the scripts, the modules, the credentials, you have the possibility to have all this dashboard monitoring information. You can create, um, this, uh, efficiency dashboard. And of course you can, um, also create all kinds of reports based on, on actions as well. So let's say you, you have, you need, um, scheduled reports about your infrastructure, your, I don't know, your active directory or whatever it might be. Um, so you could, for example, create something like this based on an action within script runner that shows you that, sh that shows, uh, yeah, the current status in this case of my active directory, for example. Um, 
so of course so re having this schedule reporting functionality or on demand um, functionality as well of course you can use here and um, yeah basically it's really about taking your scripts or maybe our scripts based on the action packs and on github put them into a, a real enterprise level management solution for script runner for your scripts for your credentials for your targets for your queries and um and of course like in this case i'm running the my, my script runner instance here locally it could also be running on an azure vm or something like this so of course if you're uh, in azure already you could do this as well All right, so if you liked what I showed you in the presentation and in the demo and you want to test it in your environment, you're very welcome to do that. You can go to our website, here is the address and also the, the QR code. So you can download our software. There is a 30 day trial license and we can al always extend this period of time. If you need more time to test the solution, we support you during that testing period, of course. And um, if you have some particular use cases and uh, or particular infrastructure requirements i would be very happy to have a a one-on-one -on -one session with you you can also again just go to our website use the qr code um, pick a time that fits your schedule i would be very happy to have a, a conversation with you about your use cases and how script runner can help you with automating with powershell and really to unlock the power of powershell across your your organization all right so with this thank you for watching my session i hope it was interesting for you and um yeah have fun with uh, your the powershell summit and hope you learn a lot of new cool stuff thanks and bye